Hey, what's up everyone? Today, let's talk about pellet grill flame out. What are the causes of it, what you can do to help prevent it, and what you should do if it happens to you. Check it out. All right, let's take care of two easy ones really fast. So first off, you can have a pellet grill flame out on you if you lose power. An easy way to help monitor for loss of power would be to have a wireless or Bluetooth thermometer in your grill me measuring the temperature of the grill itself. That way you get some sort of notification, be it from a, a device that comes with the thermometer or Bluetooth directly to your phone and lets you know if your temperature is dropping too low. You can come out and take a look to see what happened. Now the obvious easy fix here is to restore power to your grill and keep on cooking. If you lost power to your house or your neighborhood, then, I don't know, bust out a generator maybe? The second easy thing to talk about would be the igniter. Now I've read some blog posts that say that if you have a failed igniter, you can have a flame out. And that's just not true. The igniter only turns on when you first start up your pit. So if you've started your pit and you got fire, the igniter failure would not cause a flame out. So we can scratch that off our list. All right, so let's take a look at what happens if you don't clean out your pit like you're supposed to. So I've been saving ash here for, uh, I don't know, two or three weeks, maybe 25, 30 hours worth of smoking, just to test this out for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the ash pot with this uh, old ash, and let's see what happens. All right, so we got ash all the way up to the auger. And if you can't really see from this shot, but uh, the bottom holes for uh, letting air in are kind of covered up completely by ash. Just for reference, this is what a clean ash pot looks like. You see the hole there towards the bottom of it uh, that I was talking about. All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. Whoa, this alone should be enough to tell you to clean out your ash pot after every cook. All right, we can see we get some pellets coming in. Normally these pellets would drop towards the bottom, uh, right about where the igniter is, so they can catch. At this point, I'm wondering if it's even gonna catch. I don't know if it'll even start up, let's see. Maybe I put too much ash in there. Okay, so after about two minutes or so, uh, we see the pellets ignite, we, get, we start getting our smoke, which is typical. The auger's feeding some more pellets in now, and we got flame, that's good. All right, about a minute after that, and we're starting to get uh, some uh, significant flame here. I'd say this uh, successful ignition of the pit. Let's see if uh, the excess amount of ash in there causes a flame out. We're gonna have to fast forward a little bit. Let's, let's check it out. Okay, so we're about five, 10 minutes in and I start noticing that we have some smoke coming out of the hopper. So if you've ever had this happen to you, this might be a clear indication that you uh, are in need of cleaning out that ash pot. You can see it there just coming right from where the auger is. All right, so right now I'm playing back the footage about eight times normal speed. We're about 15 minutes or so uh, from our startup, and we can see that the flames are kind of starting to die out a little bit. Let's see, let's see where we go from here. So 
We're not quite a total flame out here. We still do have some embers, but um, I'd assume at this point your pit would really start to lose some temperature pretty quick. Uh, if you've been noticing some extreme temperature swings, uh, this may be your problem here. I don't know what I was trying to do there. See if it was hot, maybe. But uh, we got the pellets coming in now, so the auger's turning back on. Uh, let's see if these things catch. Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So looks like the pellets are going to catch again. Um, not a, a complete flame out, but I can see how if you're running your pit for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours, this can easily turn into a full out flame out. Right now, we're about 20 minutes into this experiment and we've had, a, I would call a flame out and now we're, we're about to reignite. Okay, so the pellets fully ignite and we get a, another flame here. Again, if you're seeing some large temperature swings, you may want to consider cleaning out that ash pot or, you know, follow the user's manual and clean it out after every cook. I decided to let the experiment run a little longer to see if the flame out were to happen again. Let's see. All right, so it's been about maybe five or 10 minutes since our last flame out. And here you see we're, we're just teetering on the edge of another flame out. There you have it, flame out number two within about 25, 30 minutes. All right, so eventually the pellets do end up catching again, but I can't emphasize enough, if you're seeing large temperature swings, make sure you're cleaning out your ash pit. All right, it may sound obvious, but if you run out of pellets, you'll have a flame out. Now, this is the only way I've ever had a flame out, and I didn't actually run out of pellets. What had happened was the pellets kind of built up on the edges of the hopper there and never made their way down into the actual auger. So when this happened to me, I must have had a period with no pellets. Then I had pellets again after I lost flame out, because when I opened my grill, this is what I saw. Okay, so how do you prevent this? It's pretty easy. If you're running low on pellets like I was in this video, just kind of pile them up right over the auger as I'm doing here. That way you have the most pellets above the auger as possible. If you have an extra bag of pellets or running a long cook, just fill your hopper up all the way to the top. All right, so let's talk about what you do if this happens in the middle of your cook. It really depends. So the one time I've had a flame out, I actually was uh, cooking some spare ribs and they were already wrapped. So I wasn't getting any more smoke on the meat anyway. All I did was took my wrapped ribs inside and put them in the oven at 250 degrees to finish off the cook. Now, if you're at the stage of your cook where you're still needing that smoke, take the meat inside, put it in the oven at the same temperature you were cooking in, allow things to cool off and go ahead and clean out your ash pit if it's a dirty ash pit fill up with pellets and do whatever other prep work you need to do before you start your pit again. Start it up, bring it to temp, and let the smoking continue. All right, if I missed something that you wanted covered, let me know in the comments below. If you like what you watch, do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.